it's not a regular day at the office without having a bunch of boxes except this time I, I well I've got a laptop and it's not for me it's actually for Jan if you guys are actually watching this by now I'm probably in Portugal so the goal was for me to leave him like a MacBook replacement so he can just go like back and forth between the studio and his basement I just want him to have the ability to be mobile and that he keeps the same exact Windows workflow he's been having for the past like few months. Let's unbox this and set it up for him. Oh, I forgot how nice these laptops are. MSI, if you're watching this, that's the only thing is that these bricks are so big. We need to get smaller bricks. Other than that, this laptop looks absolutely beautiful. Oh, I forgot how nice these laptops are. Okay, so I'll boot this up and then I'll show you guys how we set up our own Windows workflows. Good morning, YouTube. Um, I had a crazy weekend. Yeah maybe I'll make a vlog about it. Anyways, I didn't have time to set up the laptop because I was so excited to leave on Thursday, so we're gonna do that right now. Hey Google, turn on everything. Thank you. Yeah, that's the whole mess I left last night. Anyways, let's get on board with the Z16P creator from MSI. Yeah, I had a busy weekend at the Grand Prix, but today is Monday and I wanted to set up the laptop, benchmark it, and run a few tests to make sure this run as I expect it to run while I'm gone. Tomorrow I'll be dropping this off at Jan's house where we'll take a look at this laptop together and buy together, I mean you and me guys. I really think this is a really good MacBook Pro alternative along the Razer Blade 15, the XPS 15, and so on. So here's how things look for us when we are working with Windows. The first thing you should always do is check for Windows updates. A lot of Windows updates tend to be related to security, so I do recommend doing them often. In short, the whole reason of updating is to prevent potential security holes and or fixing bugs. I also recommend you doing the same thing for your native Windows apps. For this, you just gotta head to the Microsoft Store, click on Library, and click on Get Updates. It'll update various built-in applications that come pre-installed as well as the manufacturer's application. Applications. These manufacturer applications can be apps like MSI Center, Aces, Armory Create. These are important applications because they can also be used to update your drivers. Again, something that is very crucial and I tend to do them every time I get a new Windows laptop. One thing I almost never do is update my BIOS. It's generally recommended to avoid updating it unless you really need to for some reason. No need to spend time trying to fix something that is not broken. So leave it as it is. Once I've installed these updates, reset at my laptop, there's one last final update that's crucial for someone like me, making sure my graphics are up to date. If you have an integrated GPU, chances are Windows updates already did it for you, but if you are rocking something like an RTX 4060 like I am, download GeForce Experience and update your drivers. The way I do this is by making sure I'm logged in into their software, check for studio updates and gaming updates, I update those and that's it, I reset my laptop. Updating these for us is extremely important since we do use Premiere Pro a lot and it takes advantage of our RTX graphics cards. Since we are on the topic of displaying, for the love of God make sure your refresh rate is as high as possible. Mine can be set up to 120Hz, you want things to feel fast, look smooth and feel nice. While you're on this panel, also make sure you're at the highest possible resolution and at the recommended scaling settings. From here, I actually like getting rid of all the garbage apps I don't need. If you right click on the start button and click on installed apps, you'll see the list of apps that come pre-installed with your machine. I always uninstall the usual ones like all the Microsoft gadgets apps that tend to come with their laptops, extra apps that I really don't need, games if any, antiviruses, honestly the built in Windows security app is more than enough. Antiviruses are a must if you are someone that really doesn't know how to use a computer and surf the web. Once my app library is clean, I can now head to the settings, apps, 
startup and choose the apps I want to make sure that startup when I first boot my computer. Oh, and trust me, you want to keep these minimal because you want to make sure your computer's resources are as free as possible, which is why I also disabled their memory integrity feature within their core isolation settings menu. Honestly, nobody needs this much security. This tends to slow down your performance unless you like downloading weird stuff from weird websites. Once my setup is done, I do like personalizing things. Dark mode is definitely always a must. I like leaving my transparency effects and change my accent colors to orange obviously with this comes putting a nice wallpaper and set any rgb lighting that my laptops may have on my end i do have rgb within this steel series collab keyboard msi did for this laptop and with msi center as long as you make sure mystic light is downloaded you can tweak the keyboard's effects and colors other laptops have other types of softwares to achieve this but yeah that's mine of course aside from installing my rgb apps i do replace edge with google chrome or Brave. I make sure I download my development tools, which this laptop doesn't need. I also install my creative tools, Notion, Discord, Setup Phone Link, Office 365, Steam, Valorant, and so on. I arrange all of it within the taskbar by having Explorer as the most left app and removing taskbar items such as task view, widgets, and chat. Another little tip for you guys, take advantage of the various signing options. If you search for sign in within the search bar, you'll be able to see which features your laptop supports. I'm a big fan of fingerprint recognition, reminds me of the MacBooks and because on the creator Z16P is blazing fast, I enable it. Look, if you guys want a super in-depth guide on how I set up my own personal Windows laptops, let me know with a hashtag guide and I'll make sure to make a video on it. Yo. Got to the laptop, bro. It's all good. Already all set up. Valo's in there. Just the way you like it. Big games? Yes, yeah, sir. Really? And I put the uh, F1 project in there, by the way. Okay. All right. So you can transfer or do whatever you want. Okay. So yesterday I spent a bit of time with this laptop and it's pretty much good to go. Why do I think this is the MacBook Pro of Windows laptops? Well, for starters, it has great IOs. We get the versatility of USB ports by having a single Thunderbolt 4 port supporting fast charging at 65 watts and up to three monitors and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port in case you need it. Plus, we get an SD card slot with accurate write and reading speeds, an audio jack and an HDMI 2.1 port. All I want Jan to get out of this is to practically feel like our Windows workflows are on the go. And because he does come from a MacBook, I felt like IO-wise this hits close to home. The only thing that he might not be used to is the fact that this is a touch screen. It's a 16 inch QHD with 120Hz, 100% DCI-P3 which is a must for grading our videos, and incredible colors with true color technology allowing the images to feel alive. Of course, if he wants to, he can scroll Premiere with his finger if he wishes to implement that workflow, but if he gets a hold of a pen, his Lightroom editing and Photoshop environment will definitely feel a lot easier to work with. The only caveat on my end is that at 400 nits, it doesn't feel as bright as I would have liked this to be, especially if he takes this outside in working environments to get some work done. Because the display has a glossy finish to it, that might just annoy him at times. However, I do think this 16 by 10 aspect ratio will benefit him by fitting as much content as he can on screen. I will also never get over the fact that MSI is one of the brands that let you fold their screens all the way back. It definitely scares me every time I do it, but the hinges and the chassis feel extremely sturdy. This whole body is a lunar gray crafted CNC milled aluminum chassis. It's slim for what it packs at 19 millimeters. Feels incredibly sturdy, like the chassis really doesn't have any flex and the display feels extremely solid. Heck, even the keyboard area has very little flex. Of course, that does come at a cost and it's the fact that it weighs around 5 pounds, meaning that it can get heavy to carry. The chassis also has CNC cutouts for the exhaust grills, the fans, the speakers, speakers that do live at the bottom next to these newly designed rubber feet. So no, even though this says DYN audio, this isn't a speaker grill. Look, I think as a whole, physically it's an incredibly well put together laptop. 
practically similar to what Razer have to offer along with Apple. As for the keyboard and trackpad, I love MSI keyboards. This one here is a collaboration with SteelSeries, so naturally it's going to feel exactly the way I was expecting these keys to feel. Switches are great, keycaps feel nice, the 1.5mm travel and actuation force is about right for a laptop, the feedback you get from typing on this keyboard really makes typing an enjoyable experience. Like always, we've got a nice set of function keys, you can disable things like the webcam, flip your screen, control display brightness, keyboard brightness, volume adjustments, heck, even disable your trackpad. A trackpad that, um surprisingly really isn't the best i'm a bit disappointed with it it's like really hard to click on and the more you go up the more impossible the click feels of course touch wise it's all good but for those who like to feel that feedback it really isn't ideal i'm also a bit surprised by the fact that the fingerprint sensor isn't built on the power button that's something i would have definitely loved to see on this new version of the z16 along with a 1080p webcam 720p doesn't cut it for me especially since this is one of MSI's most premium laptops. Practically a laptop for creating, gaming, heavy workflows, heck even coding and making games. With that much power of course comes thermal issues but not on this laptop. I actually opened this up because I wanted to take a look at what's new. Not much, they still have their vapor chamber design. This of course cools down the CPU and GPU. Seems like they aren't really shared so heat dissipation is efficient. I think it's important to note more than anything that this is an RTX 4060 chip with an i7-13700HX CPU. So having a proper design to cool down the system is a must. Of course it gets hot though but it doesn't seem to degrade performance for the little time I've had this. I did notice last night that the top of the chassis does get really hot but that heat doesn't seem to dissipate all the way down to the keyboard. Plus if you go within the MSI Center user scenario feature, you can really activate the fans and the system will drastically cool down. On the sides, if you use this with a mouse, it won't burn your hands. You don't really feel like the heat is blowing on you. The angle design of the exhaust grills definitely prevent that. So I'd say overall, the cooling design of it at a glance is really good. Very important because it's what allows this laptop to perform at its best. Whether you're creating, coding, playing games, this here seems to do it all and output great performance. So you guys know me, I'm not a benchmarking person, but in this case, benchmarking would be the best way to paint you a picture of how powerful this system is. It's not the laptop I'll be using daily since I'm on a MacBook Air currently, but for those who are thinking of making the switch, I really want to give you an idea of how freaking powerful this is. First of all, in Cinebench, it blew my 16 inch MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro out of the water. Yields really, really good scores if we were to compare both. Geekbench scores are really good in multi-core and single core scores. I also ran their GPU benchmark and we got really nice numbers. Of course, I think that if you load up a game like Hogwarts Legacy and you play for a while, you'll realize that it's indeed a great GPU to have on a laptop. The only caveat with Windows laptops is that performance does degrade as you unplug the system. On this system, it's about 15% if we were to compare the old GPU score to the new one. The same thing goes for the CPU on Cinebench, but the drop is more around 40 to 45%. And it's something that Hogwarts Legacy will definitely show, but it's not as drastic. The same thing can be said about editing heavy files on Premiere Pro. We've been editing our F1 day in the live video on this laptop, and between having it plugged and unplugged, the performance difference is definitely noticeable. I will say when plugged in, it does yield better playback performance on a massive timeline like these. Now, while editing pictures on Lightroom and Photoshop, it really didn't make much of a difference. So that's the caveat with Windows laptops when it comes to performance. Some machines seem to really underperform while unplugged and some aren't as bad. This really seems to be in the aren't as bad category, but within an overview video, it's always hard to tell how it will perform long term. For people that also code for a living or code as a hobby, this here is all and more power than you'll ever need. Opening Adobe XD, running Dolly SL2, VS Code, Terminal, Postman, and so on will definitely feel extremely fast. The system only really starts to feel challenged if you throw code bases from Unity. 
This week I really wanted to show you guys how I set up a laptop and give you guys an overview of the MSI Creator Z16P. I figured it would make a well-rounded video since it is the laptop I'm leaving for Jan. He more or less was already not using his MacBook as much and was bringing our Razer Blade 15 back and forward from the office to his house. So I figured it was time for an upgrade and this really does deliver. I'll leave some links in the description for those who are interested in this system. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Next week when I come back I'll showcase my tech travel backpack. I think you guys will love it. Stay tuned. See you all soon. Take care.